Thanks for tuning in to this ISO Byte video series where we bring you bite-sized ISO videos. In this series, we'll talk about the updates to the ISO 27001 framework issued in the 2022 update. We'll cover all of the Annex A controls, both the new controls as well as the existing ones to make sure that you have everything you need to implement them effectively in your organization. This video will cover the application security control set in the new ISO standard. The first of these is 8.25, the secure development lifecycle control. The control reads, rules for the secure development of software and systems should be established and applied. Things that an auditor is going to be looking for are policies, procedures, and general standards that govern the organization and ensure that secure code is being written and authored for any software that your company may be producing. The next control is 8.26. It covers application security requirements. This control is going to be looking for things that are more specific to application development. So the control language is information security requirements should be identified, specified, and approved when developing or acquiring applications. What that means is that you need to specify the security requirements of any new applications your business may be buying or building. The next control is 8.27. This is secure system architecture and engineering principles. This is really more about training. So the control reads, principles for engineering secure systems should be established, documented, maintained, and applied to any information system development activities. So what that means is people involved in building any type of new information systems or adjusting existing ones need to be given proper documentation and guidance that can be evidenced to an auditor to show that they are following secure system architecture and engineering principles. What those are is up to you. You can do this in-house. You could also outsource this to another firm to help train your team. The next control is a new control. This was not in the 2013 standard. It's 8.28, secure coding. So it may sound similar to the one before. However, ISO has gone to links to focus on the idea of secure coding principles. So it's set apart things like system engineering principles as more infrastructure and configuration principles. Secure coding is focused strictly on the coding practices that your developers or engineers are utilizing in their process. So you're going to want to make sure that you spend time clearly illustrating that you are training your development teams on secure coding practices and you're pulling that guidance from authoritative sources. The control reads secure coding principles should be applied to software development. It's a simple statement, however, there's a lot of guidance. Make sure to look at 27002 to get that implementation guidance. The next control is 8.29. This is security testing and development and acceptance. The control reads, security testing processes should be defined and implemented in the development lifecycle. Essentially, you wanna show that you are applying adequate testing procedures and processes to the software development process to ensure that things are built as expected, functioning as expected, and most importantly, there are no security issues found in the testing. And if they are, that they're addressed in a timely manner. There's two more controls, 8.31, which is separation of development tests and production environments. This one speaks for itself. ISO wants to see that to the extent possible, you have development testing and production environments completely separated uh, from a networking perspective or from a physical perspective. Uh, either one is acceptable, but you want to make sure that you define your own requirements for this and are able to illustrate this to an auditor. The last one is 8.32, change management. Change management states that changes to information processing facilities and information systems should be subject to change management procedures. These might be a change advisory board, it might be a simple process and a ticketing system. It could be all kinds of things, but essentially what you want to be able to show is that you have a controlled change management process that's being consistently followed by the team as they introduce any types of changes to the in-scope environment. Thanks for tuning in to this ISO Byte video series. If you'd like to learn more about updates to the framework, check out a link in the description below to a white paper we've written. Also, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great content like this. Look for us on LinkedIn, and also check out our website at risk360.com to learn more about how Risk360 may be able to help you achieve your security and compliance goals.